Radio YouTube, bit of masking on request. I think the dude called Lit Up, even. Uh, he always watches my raw vids, I'm pretty sure. He said, show us some more masking vids. So here we go. Um, I'll do my best to keep you guys interested, but <laughs> if I ran out of shit to say, I'll just stop talking. Um, at the end of the day, you don't have to watch these videos. They are just raw videos. They're not edited or anything. I just take you through the job on the fly. And yeah, mask some shit. So, a bit of luck, I'll be able to get in from behind here and get some tape in, in behind there. And I want to pop that lock back open again. Yeah, that's open, I think. So yeah, it's Friday today. Always a good day. Well, it's usually quite busy around this shop here. But yeah, it's always, you know, a bit excited for the weekend. Yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a prick to get. Yeah, I might actually have to sit this lock back in because it just dropped out like 10 times. Might be able to get it to sit in and put some foam in there. As it sit there and this is something holding that down. Oh yeah, his rod's falling out. Yeah, okay, we'll get some foam in there now. That'll work. This. It looks like the boss is coming, that's when you usually hide. Oh, I just need you to polish this bit up on this car. No, I'm gonna hide. <laughs> I'm running away. There's a bit of polish caught in there from last time where we painted the car. So we'll do that. Cover the polish up with a bit of a false edge so to not clear over it. This rubber there is sitting quite close to the painted surface, so I want to get the tape up underneath it and then lift it back up. So when I mask it, it's going to sit back down over the top of it. Get a three quarter inch. So yeah, bombers playing tonight. My Australian followers will know what I'm talking about. That's uh, my AFL team, AFL for those who don't know, is our local Australian rules, rules football. It's awesome. A lot of Americans, they'll watch it and they'll like, for starters, they won't understand what's going on, but I think, um, yeah, they'd probably actually quite like it if you get the hang of it. Yeah, I've heard like, yeah, a lot of the Yanks, they'll like, watch a little bit of AFL and they'll be like, what? They're not wearing helmets? Those guys are crazy. <laughs> like it's a full contact sport, it's pretty, pretty crazy out there. People getting KO'd every week and all that. All right, so edge mask first before you shut that door. Might pay to put a bit in there just in case. That should be right to shut. Beautiful. And yeah, like you can use your false edges up here, but I honestly find it's just so not necessary. I used to. I used to spend all this extra time masking these jams up. 
bit of back masking and a bit of gun control when you're spraying it but you mainly just need to spray there and just get the slightest bit of over spray in there and you shouldn't get an edge but if you were to go and like slam two big heavy coats of like a HS clear right up to there you'll get big edges As of recording this video, I put up my top eight primer guns review. I'm sure you've all seen it by now. I'm sure most of the people subscribe to my raw channel already. Subscribers of my main channel, but um, yeah, that took that took a long time to make that video. A lot, a lot of planning and effort went into it, and um, I'm happy with how it came out. Uh, most people seem to be pretty, uh, you know, receiving it with yeah, well, I guess. Um, Few people are like a little bit disappointed that the PRI Pro Light got in at uh, number eight. And it's got the worst position, but I got them all, got uh, wrote all the guns down on a list, and then figured the criteria that I wanted to grade them on. And I didn't even go. I went into that review expecting it to be different. I had a feeling the GPI. Like in my initial thoughts was that the GPI was going to win. But after um, you know grading each gun, it's not how it came up. And uh, yeah, look, it's it really is just a minute amount of probably haters more so than like actually been actual real criticism. Like people like, oh, the side is the best gun, you know, and he put it in at number three or four or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, at the end of the day, you can make your own review. You know, I'm just a spray painter. I'm just someone making some YouTube videos. Um, nothing stopping you from doing your own review. I don't care. Um, you want to put your starter in at number one and recommend people spend $500 plus on a primer gun. That's, that's up to you. You got your credibility to uh, look after, I got mine. Well, I can't recommend someone, um, and, unless you really want to, like sure, if, if you want to spend four or $500 on a primer gun, I'm not going to tell you not to, but I'm not, it's not going to be the first gun I recommend when there's guns out there for less than half the price that do exactly the same thing. Built just as well, they spray just as well, and they do the same thing. Like um, I was saying that to Alan, my apprentice this morning, like if I'm to recommend something to someone, I'm going to put myself in your shoes. You know, what would I want if I was in your position? And... I don't give a shit if the gun's got a Devilbus label on it or a Star label on it, you know. If, if the gun's built well and it does the job um, well, well then I'll rec happy to recommend it to you. And as I say, most people get it, you know. Most, most people aren't those douchebags, but they're always out there. Yeah, these days I've just been ruthless on comments, man. If you come here with negativity, um, I'm not interested in it. I'll just block and delete you. You know, I don't have to be doing this YouTube channel and um, you know, I could just stop uploading, stop reading comments if I want. So if, if you're not positive and um, you know, or if you can criticize, but do it in a constructive manner, you know? Um, but yeah, I just, I don't need headaches in my life for the sake of a hobby, essentially. So I don't go, I don't go home after a big day's work to listen to your bitching and whining, you know. So if you want to be a douchebag, that's it, you're getting blocked from my channel, it's as simple as that. And I don't care, <laughs> I really don't care. You don't have to watch my videos, you don't have to like them. And honestly, that's like, if you really hate someone, like a YouTuber, the, the, the best thing you can do to get at them is not watch their videos. Like, that's what everyone wants on YouTube. They want your views, they want your watch time. It helps them. They make a bit of ad revenue out of it, and it helps their channel. So, all you haters out there, if there's any watching, there probably isn't, because as I say, it's such a minute amount of people. Um, the worst thing you can actually do is just stop watching. You know, I'm, I'm ha I don't care if, like, a view is a view at the end of the day. I don't care if it's come, really, if it's coming from someone that likes me or hates me. Um, and then on the other side of things, like some of these people are just like deranged losers without any lies. Because if if there's like YouTube, there's plenty of YouTube channels out there that I don't like, but I just don't watch them. Why would I? <laughs> like, 
Um, I don't know, why, why do you obsess over someone that you, you hate, you know? It's just, uh, it says more about you than what it does about the person that you supposedly hate. And a lot of it stems back to jealousy, I understand that. Yeah, I've found like if you get little door jam repairs like that, it's so much easier in the long run. Um, over years of experience, just paint this whole thing because you'll, you'll try doing a little blend there and you get all this overspray and it'll bear sand pit and then, you know, the car will be out the back and the boss will be like, oh man, that looks terrible. You'll be doing little spot repairs and stuff like that. So, you know, an, an extra five minutes, if that, um, when it's in the paint shop, save you a lot of stuffing around later on. And parts like this, I'm more than happy to mask up. Honestly, I'd probably rather mask them up than take them out because you, you can pull that rubber back. I've got, oh, here we go. The two choices, I usually go for the 3M. You got that J-Tape over there as well, but it's still good. I've used it heaps actually, but I don't know, something about the 3M. Can't beat the 3M. I do actually like how the J-Tape's got perforated uh, sections in it and you can just uh, rip it off. I just find that the 3M adhesive is just a far superior, it just sticks a lot better. You see that, that's, that's not coming up in a hurry. You pay for this stuff though, it's, you're looking around 50 bucks a box. I think some, even the Phoenixa, they're half the price. I don't know if you get exactly the same amount in a roll. I don't know if they're the same length or anything. They could be, I just can't remember. Um, you could partly be making the saving because they're a smaller roll. I don't, as I say, I haven't looked into that, but you get what you pay for at the end of the day, most of the time. But yeah, like as far as uh, that primer gun review goes, you could actually look at that review and say, oh yeah, so Gunny did put the um, the Sarda jet in there at say fifth or whatever it was, but price doesn't bother me. So I can actually look at his review, disregard price, and it would be up in number one spot. But I believe price is important, like when you're making any purchase at the end of the day, you know? And same with the uh, Devilbits PRI Pro Lite. I personally wouldn't buy one. As I said in the video, I, I would not pay $500 for a primer gun. When you got things like the FLG, the AZ-3, and other guns like that, they're just as capable of getting the primer on um, the much lower price, uh, price. And they do last as well. Yeah, as I say, most people, they get it. Most people are from the real world, I guess. Nice, <coughs> nice, nice, nice. Keep that for next time. Waste well, not, what not? Yeah, I was, um, I didn't grow up in a rich family, you know, so I was sort of taught to appreciate the things of value that you have, you know, so, um, and also to sort of be wise with what you do spend and stuff like that. So, you know, some, maybe like some little spoiled brats that have always had everything they want, um, always, you know, driven around in the latest cars and all that kind of stuff. Sure, you, you know, you want to go and buy your sardas and stuff like that, but, and, I mean, I'm not saying everyone <laughs> uses sardas as well, brats, obviously, but, um, you know, when there's a better value for money option out there, that's, that's what I'm usually going to take. Like, I still want top quality, but if there's something out there that's, you know, just as good, if not, you know, a little bit, yeah, just as good, um, 
Yeah, why wouldn't you go for that? Uh, and it's, to me, it's not like a status symbol either. Like, I don't, I don't care about all that kind of stuff. It's just pretty down to earth. Average, everyday Aussie, really. Yeah, I don't have to be driving around in the latest Mercedes Benz to feel good about myself or anything. I think it shows a bit of insecurity in your personality if you need that, actually. Uh, anyway, game's just rambling shit. talk about nothing's coming to mind just masking shit up Yeah, I'm thinking of doing another top 10 spray guns review and do it with, uh, yeah, the same kind of approach I do my top 10s now. And I'm looking forward to that, actually. Um, whilst they are big reviews and take quite a lot of time and effort, they they can be really rewarding for me. Like, I look back at that video and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, but um, I would... <laughs> I would change things, I'm like, man, I didn't give myself quite enough for each gun, like, um, I think it was like a, a minute and a half per gun on the top eight primer guns review, um, whereas my top eight minigun review, I think I gave it two minutes each, and it just gave me that little bit extra time to uh, explain each gun, so I found myself like, editing up, oh sorry, narrating that video, I'm like, damn, I, could have, I really got to smash through it. And there was a couple of things I, I left out that I wish I had said, you know. That's all right. It's all good. As a creator, I guess you're always going to be critical of your own work. If you're not, you're not really going to improve, are you? And the same goes with spray painting too. You've got to pick, pick at your own work, look at the imperfections, say, oh, you know, what did I do there? How can I improve on that next time? What can I do to stop it? Yeah, life's good though. Um, enjoying work. It's it's quite easy for me these days. I can get yeah, lots of jobs smashed out fast. Like this job here, uh, the repairs were no good. I ended up having to refill them and you know, just bang, smash into it, get a bit of filler in there, sand it out, reprime it, you know, have your lunch break, mix the colour up. Um, by that time, your prime is usually dry and Got a great deal of downtime, you still get them in and get them out in a reasonable time frame and to a reasonable quality standard, even though sometimes they don't always come over very good. Yeah, like a lot of the time I'll just do some filler work on repairs and that and it's like, one skim <laughs> and they're better than what they'll get sent over as sometimes. That's all good, like I don't hate on them. For that, it's just, yeah, it is what it is doesn't bother me as long as my, my main issue is getting to go home on time. I don't like doing overtime these days, you know. I do if I had to. I think two nights this week I stay back to 4.30. And I usually finish at 4. Although Friday we always stay back to 4.30. But yeah, Fridays, mate, as soon as 4.30 hits, bang, I'm out of here. Go and uh, junk food Fridays. Me and the missus have... Uh, 
I don't know, KFC, pizza or Maccas every Friday. Reward yourself for a long week's work. Yeah, yeah, who can be bothered cooking on a Friday anyway? Uh, well, the missus cooks for me every night <laughs> otherwise, but yeah, wouldn't expect her to cook for me on a Friday. Then we do our shopping on Saturday morning. Go down to the shops, get your weekly stock up of the fridge and that. Have a nice lunch together on Saturday afternoon. Spend a couple of hours editing. Watch a movie or two Saturday night. Maybe a game of footy if it's footy season, which it is at the moment. Wake up Sunday, chill out. My missus is Buddhist, so sometimes we'll go down to the uh, local temple. There's like a little bit, well, it's not really what you class as a temple from Thailand, but it's a place of worship for the Buddhists. And I enjoy going there, it's good, a bit of fun. Um, and then yeah, go for a walk if the weather's nice or something, just go down to a, a park or something and go home and chill out and yeah, wake up and next thing you know it's Monday morning, do it all over again. But yeah, life's good. <clears throat> As my grandpa used to say, you wouldn't be dead for quids. Alright, where are we up to? Geez, we're not far off a bit of plastic, are we? A bit more edge masking. <clears throat> All right, we're up for some plastic. Have we got any left? I think this one's about to run out. No, that's not going to get over this car. All right, we got more. Yes, we do. <laughs> there you go. There's my partner in crime over there painting the tailgate and a rear bumper. Uh, A200 Merc, I think he's got in there. He's a good dude. He's a good painter too. Kiwi guy. I find the Kiwis in Australia um, hard workers. I met a lot of people from around the world. Quite a, I guess, multicultural country, Australia. I guess the entire world is these days, so isn't it? Like most of the Western world are, is diversifying. And but yeah, I've just found Kiwis like they're here to work. They're here for a reason, so they just get in and get it done. You know, good work ethic. You know. I met quite a lot of them in the mines when I was working out in the mines and yeah they just they just get stuck right into it like back breaking work but wouldn't complain about it and a lot of the Aussie guys they'd just be like no this is too hard man yeah the other funny thing like I was working out there in the mines and I was saying this to Alan the other day like about some of the guys that you see doing all the bodybuilding and they'll come out there they're ripped as um, me, always been a bit, you know, scrawny. Never been like big as in size, muscly or anything. But you get these guys out there that are full, you know, gym spec, and you get them into actual practical um, use of your muscles, and they they can't do it, you know, like scrawny little gunnies out there lifting up these great big, um, you know, drilling components and. Uh, hammers as in not like a bang bang hammer as in like a, a hammer drill type thing off, off a big drill rig you know uh, 80 to 120 kilos depending on which um, rig you're working on you know you got to lift them onto the um, end of the drilling rods and yeah you get some of the, the big guys coming out and they, they can't do it you know and they last a couple of days sometimes like some people go out there they'll last a uh, couple of hours on the rig and they say no I can't do this you know they'll go through all the um, inductions and uh, that's where you like learn about the mine site you do all your training and all that 
get them out onto the rig, mate, and <laughs> can't even last an hour, you know? It's funny. Um, I did a year. I did a year as a driller's offsider, RC drilling. So that's uh, uh, air drilling. Uh, C stands for reverse circulation, so you got the drilling rods and um, big six six meter long rods and you got a big compressor on the drill rig it pumps air down through the rod um, and there's a sample tube on the inside uh, and it fires a hammer the air fires a hammer on the and, and the drill bits basically just pounding into the ground while turning um, yeah that's that's hard slog man you're out there you're out there in the elements um, lifting up real heavy bags um, that's no, crazy. I don't think I could see myself doing it again. I wouldn't out of choice. I mean, I, I probably could, but I don't really think I'd <laughs> prefer to. If I had the choice, I wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, choose to do that job again. But it was an experience, I'll tell you what. Um, and it was actually partly because of that that um, I came back to this trade and loved it even more than, like, I always did like this trade, you know what I mean? Um, I always had a bit of a passion for it and enjoyed it um, but especially after leaving it for a year it made me just man I love this shit you know and then yeah we can kind of thank that for the creation of this channel you know well the main channel I should be talking about but this second channel I was um you know how I came up with the idea for this channel I was one Friday night and you know this is a life of a youtuber you dedicate a lot of your life to your channel right one night I was editing it's like Friday night should have been drinking beer and uh, <laughs> watching the footy you know but I wasn't I was editing and I was just, I was just doing my head in like it must have been a big edit or something and I had this epiphany like it was like a million dollar moment I'm like they can do it themselves Gunman Raw! I came up with it straight onto the phone to my um, my friend slash YouTube mentor, Dead Farang. I'm like, mate, I've called him up. He's, he is hanging with his mates on a Friday night, having a few beers and that. I'm like, mate, I've got the best idea. Just came up with a million dollar idea. The Gunman Raw. Because uh, I was, uh, I'm like, they do it. They do the editing themselves. If they don't like it, they can jump and skip through it. It's like, yeah, you know what, that's actually not a bad idea, and yeah, the rest is history. I think, I think we're up to close to 16,000 on this channel, which is um, pretty amazing for a bit of a no-frills channel. No editing. Yeah, so I've got this uh, Lexus NX300 next door, which once this is masked, I'm going to go chase that job up. I painted it uh, yesterday. That thing came up killer. Oh, man. <laughs> um, top 10, if not top 5 bonnets I've ever painted. There was like one big chunk through the top of the guard, but that bonnet, man, I reckon there was only like three tiny little nibs in it. It looked glassy. It was clean, it just, oh, mate, cream over it, you know, like, <laughs> you don't always get them like that, but when you do, you really appreciate it. Um, I think part of the reason is because I didn't actually base coat up the whole bonnet, I just base coated up a small section of it, and, um, yeah, whenever I flow coat, I always get the jobs cleaner, so basically, like, most of that bonnet was just a flow coat. It didn't actually have the metallic base coat down there. And I've found, yeah, like, more so with your solvent base coat, like, it just... It's a bit pretty, even if you tack rag it, you just sort of get some bits of dust in it. Um, but I think it's actually coming from the base coat, not even from the environment around. Um, because yeah, when I was spraying Chromax Pro water, man, it, it just literally felt like you were flow coating every job because um, that base coat just lays down so smooth and so clean. And the lack of solvents obviously, obviously to, um, help we shrink back you know uh well there is some solvents even in the even in the water borns but yeah man it's it's it is much better than um solvent the water that i used anyway um but i don't know there's something about solvent i like it <laughs> I, I did my apprenticeship on solvent i've always used it most of the time anyway and 
I don't know, it's just, it's easy. It's quick too, that's, that's you know, like I, I like to smash the jobs out and, you know, you save yourself a bit of time using the solvent. I don't know, some will argue that <coughs> actual application will take a little bit longer, but you, you're definitely winning out on your dry times. Like, I'll, I'll put the base coat down for this, walk out within five to seven minutes, I'll be right to clear. By the time I've gone out, cleaned the base coat, gone out, mixed up the clear, that's, that's right to go over the top of. Whereas with water, in the middle of winter, man, you gotta leave it for half an hour plus sometimes. Um, you gotta crank that booth right up to like 35 or, you know, at least 30. If you want it to dry and then get the blowers onto it and, <clears throat> yeah. Where I used to work, actually getting the, um, the Devilbus blowers on the stand, like a bit of a tripod and it had two blowers there, that was definitely great. But then the other side of it is that, <clears throat> They used to have an air screw compressor, but then that air screw compressor died and they just replaced it with a standard old, old school style, you know, belt driven compressor and it just couldn't keep up with the air blowers. Like the guys out there would be sanding down and, you know, you'd be in there trying to spray after using the air blowers and it, you just like, wouldn't even have enough air pressure to clear with, you know. Um, another demand was the air fed respirator that I was using, you know, that's another bit uh, using more air there, uh, yeah, so it's all good. <coughs> yeah, I don't know if I like this colour. Um, the other painter I work with is like, man, I love this colour, and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like a uh, violet, like, unless you get it in the the light you can't really see it like it looks like black in the, in the shade and then <coughs> it's got a bit of violet and yellow pearl in it um, yeah I mean that's one of those things everyone's got their own opinion on colors you might hate something I like and vice versa there's no right and wrong when it comes to that Yeah, that's, that's an important thing. Anyone who's like looking at YouTube, and, and a time consuming thing, but very important. Anyone who wants to make some YouTube videos, file management. Whenever you get home, like so, I've, I've got this footage in my camera here right now. So I go home, put it on the computer, create folders, you know. I've got folder after folder after folder, just full of stuff, but they're all labeled, you know. I'll have, um, raw video folder or have uh, edited video folders and just so that you can sort of find the footage when you need it. Um, yeah, it's probably irrelevant to most of you guys because you don't or aren't interested in making videos, but yeah, might help one or two people. My um, mentor, Deb Farang, he's the one that told me to start this YouTube channel. He actually told me about it years ago and I'm like, man, that sounds like a cool idea, you know, like, you know, make YouTube videos. And I wanted to do it like back since 2009, 10, around that era. And yeah, finally got into it. But what I was going to say is that, because um, I actually started this channel before Dead for Rung did, um, and I'd been around computers and gaming and all that for a while. When he started his, he, he went over to Thailand because he's got a YouTube channel dedicated to Thailand. Um, I'm like, man, I can tell you now, put your video footage in folders, like label it, it does, I said it won't even matter, even just label them one, two, three, four, five, at least that way you've got them in all chronological order. He didn't do it and yeah, like a few months later when he came back to Australia, he called me up, I was like, man, I so should have listened to you, like I've got all this footage and I don't know what is what, you know, just digging through, having to watch each single video file to find what it, what it was on and that. Um, yeah, very important. I, I guess it's a little bit like housekeeping around the workshop, you know, you keep the workshop easy, uh, clean and uh, put things back in their place, it's gonna make things run a lot smoother, isn't it, you know? He says as he throws rubbish in the corner of the booth. <laughs> uh, but at least it's in the corner of the booth, not around here, you know? <laughs> I'll take it out when I go.
yeah, even little things like having that prep cart or the, you know, the trolley that I use out there. It saves a lot of time, a lot of running around looking for things like that's when I first started here because it's a reasonable sized workshop and they've got like the sanding cupboard over there. Man, that was just so time wasting when I was just doing it on the fly, you know, um, without a, a prep cart or anything. Just, just spent half your day walking around the workshop. <laughs> you know, you get back to your job and like, ah, oh, now I need a bit of 500. You get back there, use your 500. Ah, oh, now I need a bit of hand sanding paper or something and back over and back over. Yeah, certain shops it's not going to matter so much like well certain shops might already have uh, you know uh, dry sanding uh, you know systems set up um, yeah smaller shops it may not matter either but yeah some of the bigger shops you work in having to give a, a cart to organize all your stuff is very handy well we're not far off being ready and you've probably listened to enough of Gunny ranting and raving and talking shit anyway. But that, that was always my idea with this Raw channel. It's like, well, you know what? They don't want to watch it. They don't have to. Like, and I guess it's the same thing with anything. Like, if you're not enjoying what you're watching, and why would you continue? But I get people ask for it, so I'll put it up. It doesn't really take a great deal of time for me anymore uh, especially with my latest computer upgrade and my fast internet I've got at home I moved into a new place like three months ago and they've got what they call the NBN and uh, NBN and yeah I think I'm up around like 40 megabytes a second download and 20 up or 10 up depending on the time I think they've got like peak peak periods but yeah also got a uh, unlimited internet which is great that's pretty much the industry standard here in Australia surprised when I hear like a lot of Americans and they got data caps like yeah sure you might have like large data caps but you can still go through it like when you're streaming videos like Netflix and YouTube um yeah you know, and especially if you're uploading and downloading and all that um you do go through it Yeah, I think they've even got, um, yeah, they do actually. They've got uh, unlimited mobile plans at the moment. They've just started the first one. I think Telstra started one. You've, you've got to be on a plan. I think it's like 70 bucks. But yeah, unlimited mobile data, that's pretty damn cool. Um, I, think they, I think it was like 80 gigabytes of high speed unlimited, but then... Um, after that it drops down to like 1.2 megaseconds, which still like it's not that slow like for a mobile phone It's all you really need like it's still definitely enough to like stream video and, and stuff like that even upload <coughs> But yeah, like where I used to live my upload speeds are a damn joke man like I, I Would sometimes have to leave the computer on for like three days just to upload two or three videos And a couple of months ago there like they had this deal with my phone uh, provider. They gave me like 50 gigabytes data, but I had to use it over like four days. So I just made all these raw videos and that was like, oh man, it was probably about two months, two or three months where I uploaded, well, I, I scheduled them all. Um, I scheduled like a video for each second day. <coughs> um, yeah, that's all good. Patch up this hole, we don't want to overspray all through their jams. And then I will here, I'll have to do like a little bit of a, a puff in, a bit of a blendy blend, but all this is going to be all fully painted so it should come up nice. And just do a false edge down here after I prep sold it. Or put a bit of paper down the bottom there, and a bit of foam in there. And that's us. I'm going to call it a vid for that one. There, there's 39 minutes. Wow, that's that's a long video. So 39 minutes of my setups. It's not exactly ultra quick, but yeah, you're probably about on the money there. No worries. I'll see you in the next one. Coming out.